Okay, we're recording. Right. What? No, I'm not ready. All right, well, what, welcome. This is uh, Rock and Joe's The Seniors of uh, Fire 2015. All right, let's, let's start with Kelly. What were, can you share any memories of choir shows that were particularly meaningful or funny? Um, I think in general, I had a lot of fun memories with those two, but I feel like most of the funny memories were more with Jesus Christ Superstar. Like just like being like like the practices being a leper and everything. It was just it was just funny. I don't know. Like when we oh this was funny when um Patrick was in, in doing an impression of Michael. Like he was standing in for him because Michael was still had a conflict and we all just attacked Patrick and that was all the host all was just and I just thought that was the funniest thing for some reason. And I don't know, I just feel like a lot of the hosts we all got along really well. It was like a lot of good friendships. I mean all of them had good friendships, but I have a lot of fun memories from Superstar. And Lydia? I think the most fun show that I've done the most fun show that I've done I was I think Your in Town was a lot of fun because it was so different than anything else that we've done. So it was just something unique and different. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to get away from traditional shows and do something that's more comedically based. Yeah, cool. And Eric. Yeah. Yeah, why don't you wait? Um I don't really have a particular memory that is meaningful to me, but my favorite show was Pippin. Um, I think that's because it was like the first show that I did, so I was meeting all these new wonderful people and making all these great experiences, and Pippin was just a great, really fun show. Well, what was it about Pippin that made it special to you? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't I honestly have no idea, but it was just a good group of people to do the show with. It was a fun show. The music is beautiful. <laughs> okay, I, I would say my bar no most funny choir moment in history that I think that I can think about is uh, for Pippin. It's the pre-show, like I'm go naturally do this over. I'm going out there. I'm feeling like it, like a freaking rock star with my <laughs> first lead in a PRC production, and then suddenly. Like I, I, it's like my first, it's like my first time off stage. Like when they start with Glory, and someone like someone comes back stage and says, "Kyle, uh, you're flying us down the first 20 minutes." You're cool. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I was like, I mean, that was that was my first moment where it's like, oh crap, sometimes you really have to focus on the little things like that when you're like down on stage. That that is probably the most obviously funny one of my entire time. <laughs> okay, my I also have a fun from this year, when we did Children of Eden, I was on stage and we were during the scene when we were right in front of the tree and Jake had to say the, the key word of mystery for me to continue on to my next line and his line was, um, I don't know, it's a mystery to me, but instead of saying that, he said, I don't know, what do you think it means? And I just looked at him and I was like, what? <laughs> what, what do you mean, what do I think it means? That, that's what was going through my head and it was just so funny. <laughs> I guess a funny memory of a show that I have, this doesn't really have anything to do with me, but it's just something that sticks out in my memory, is uh, when we were doing the pre-show for Jesus Christ Superstar, um, with Paul Salierno, uh, he was doing, um, what was his name? Blood uh, Money. Blood Money, or whatever yeah, it's called. Yeah, he was called. Judas' Death. Judas' yeah. Death, yeah. and he, uh, he threw the coins behind him, and, uh, what? He hit my head. He hit Mrs. Maravilla in the head, and also, wow. in, Dented the organ, the expensive organ in the church that we were at, and I just remember hearing the hearing the music and hearing the giant like clang of the organ. I saw it fly over my head. We were all just shocked. Like, it was just really funny. It's incredible. Incredible. Yeah, exactly. I'm speaking on camera. I did that. That really hurt. Yeah, it was a heavy bag. Like it was. Yeah. I, and like I didn't know where I was behind the, the yeah. backdrop, so I didn't know what was going on. All yeah. of a sudden, I got bam in my head. Yeah, it was not like, good. What was that? <laughs> that was not bad. That's all. Uh, anything that um, serious about the shows, like the themes of the shows that you can take with you, like you know, messages that. Children of Eden. Yeah. 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 Hold on. 
Um, I think. <laughs> I don't want to get people busy. <laughs> too fast. I think the children we meet in had the best message, at least to me. I, I think I can speak like on behalf of pretty much everyone with the idea of like making your own choices. And there were a lot of interesting po points. Like Colin said, there's always a choice, and like just in general, there's a lot of like, like when Eve, when Louise and Eve said. Um, like why you put questions to me. Like there are a lot of like parts in it that made me think more so than a lot of other shows. And I think especially like at the age, like as a senior, like moving on and just everyone has to make choices in life. Like, okay, when am I gonna have a breakfast? When am I when am I gonna when am I gonna put my application for college? Like it can range. And it can, a lot of the messages like that can apply to anyone. It's okay to be nervous about a decision or not really know what you want to do and that you don't necessarily need to have everything planned out for the future. You just kind of have to take it as it comes and be okay with it. Other people are, like they don't approve your decision, but as long as you believe in your decision, then that's really all you need. Uh, no, no. Okay. No. My, uh, I guess the two shows about the strongest message or messages from me are Pippin and Children of Eden. I enjoyed Pippin's message because I think it's interesting that it's this show about like, uh, like, a, a, like, a, a, like a person like attempting to like find fulfillment in their life and then end up realizing that you can find that fulfillment in something like really like simple and like down to earth, like something like that can provide fulfillment, which I just think applying to any aspect of your life is a very like interesting theme and kind of almost goes against like a lot of what you need to think about uh, life in general. I would say, however, though, the strongest one I connected with was Children of Eden because um, I think not only does it stress about the concept that we are responsible for our own choices, but I feel I was really inspired by how it talks about love and how uh, for the, the people you love the most, like you can't, you, you can't control them. Like you have everyone, like even even some people and like in relationships and like things like that you have with people that you love like so dearly. It's uh, it's all it still comes back to freedom and choices. And I mean, the hardest part of love is letting go. I mean, that's and I, I mean, I can apply that as a senior, and I can apply it for the entire rest of my life. Those words. Um. The show that social media most was Children of Eden, and I just think that it's really important to take with you that like even the smallest choices that you make carry over into like like your whole entire life. They don't. It's not like you make a choice. I mean, some choices you make and then they just that's it. But there's some choices that you make and they just keep carrying over and carrying over and carrying over. I'm just saying the same thing over and over again. But yeah, I just think it's important that. Right. Yeah, now going off of what you said, I definitely, I, um, what I, what I, uh, to build off of what she said, I really like the lyric, they're just like, um, for every moment of our lives, it's, it's the beginning, uh, so I, I, I think it's really important that, uh, certain choices you make and the mistakes that you make, even though they, they, um, like, actions create, they create, the, uh, the person, create the character that you, that you choose to carve out for yourself, um, and even if you like monumentally mess up in life, there's always another. There's always another beginning. There's always a chance to redeem yourself and to make up for the mistakes that you have made and mistakes that other people have made in the past. So I think like the the concept of like rebirth and like the cycle of always uh, you know, redeeming yourself or um, be bettering yourself for the future, I think, is a, is a good theme of children to be to carry over. So, what are your? Do we have any fond memories of tour? Post home. Oh yeah, I, 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 I guess I have, a, I have a good one from my uh, my first tour. When I, uh, it was my second host home with Greg Mercado, we were staying at this massive house in uh, Panama City, Florida, and the, the, the reason, it, was, it was just me, him, and an elderly dentist who lived there. And there was like there had to be like 25 rooms in this house. So he takes us he takes us upstairs to his uh, to the top floor where he's uh, he's he's um, leading us down the hallway, and we keep we keep passing a bedroom a, a, a bedroom with two, a bedroom with two beds, a bedroom with all these all these beds until he leads us to the very last room and says, oh, here's where you'll be staying. And we walk inside and it's, the, it's this really, really tiny bed with like a little, little dresser and a tiny mirror. And they're like, oh, you have to share this bed, which is funny because if you know Greg, Greg is a very, very large, large individual. And 
there was literally like I'm gonna not exaggerating eight bedrooms that we had just passed when right, 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 right. he was uh, taking us upstairs. So that's just like, and I remember he left the room with me and Greg like what was that? So yeah, that's like that's probably like, and that was like one of my first tour memories too, where I was like, all right, just gotta adjust with things that with things that are thrown at you. So yeah, I always tell that story because it's a funny one. Uh, I have one. Um, I was actually in a hotel with Erin and Amanda and Vicky. And um, me and Erin were laying in bed, like about to go to sleep, and like we're in this like pretty big house, and this woman is like, oh yeah, I don't use the basement that much, so like it's pretty clean, and you guys can just have it to yourself. And like, so it was really nice. And we're laying in bed, and all of a sudden it turns 12 o'clock, and the alarm clock goes off, and we're like, wait, didn't she say that she never comes down here? And we didn't know how to turn it off. It was the scariest thing ever. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll go with two. One from my first tour, and uh, it was uh, the night of, uh, one of one of our Key West shows. And we were going to the next day, but like our host home guy drove us down to like the, the, the most southern point of the continental United States. And we're down there. And, 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 and like me and Jake just told me we were so funny to stand by. And be like, and be like 90 miles to Cuba, 90 miles to communism. And the guy goes, you guys are crazy. <laughs> And I will remember that for my entirety of my life. And the other one, which is from this store, is it was me and a Col and Colin host home. And uh, it was like it was uh, the third church, so there was a lot of young people at, and it was a great show. We're feeling really good. And the guy like puts us, and the guy like puts us in his car, and we're, and we're like about we're driving back that to to the host home. You know, like residential roads, supposed to be 20 miles, 25 miles per hour. Um, we drove about 80 on the residential roads, <laughs> like 80 miles per hour, like, that, like doing crazy like hairpin turns. On like back streets and stuff. I mean, it was dangerous, but I mean, this 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 kid would not take no for an answer about driving this car this far. And then like we're and then like we're just driving, we're driving the hill, and suddenly like a like a roller coaster like hill, hill appears. The car's just careening down, and I'm like, well, this could be the end of my life. But I survived, and here I am today. <laughs>
So my first one was cool because I spent it with them for two nights, which just usually, I don't think usually happens, it was with Louise and Kayla. And what was cool was that the people were really nice. And we get upstairs, they made us little care packages. They had like little magazines, like 17 magazines, some little, I think they were like little Clementines too in Georgia. And I was like, oh, this is really cute. And the, the one I had, who was with my last one, was with Amanda Lacona. And we had a breakfast with Nikki and Sam because our, um, our host homes combined it, had breakfast. So that was pretty cool. I guess in general, I feel like like the second post home, like the last home post home was really cool because it was like like a double bedroom and it was really nice and the, and the family was really sweet and everything and I, like I bonded with band of so that was cool. I liked it a lot. What are hotel nights? Memories of hotel nights or retreat? Do you, do you want to do retreat more? Whatever. 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 I got to I got a good retreat. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, no, here's here's my here's my here's my retreat memory. <laughs> my retreat memory. It was uh it was the urine town retreat. And we were trying to do this like really like spiritual moment. We were doing like a walk like because at the end of the at the end of the night of the retreat we would do these like almost like a like a, a mini worship service like thing where they like you know they read stuff in the Bible and there's like hymns and stuff and like Tazé stuff and it's like it's usually a meaningful experience but like we were reading this this prayer about water and as we're reading the prayer about water there's supposed to be like the sound of water in the background so Sean McKinley is pouring water into like this bowl I think it just sounds like someone is literally just taking a leak like a little <laughs> and like we're all we're like we're all looking around at each other like is this is this real is this really happening. I mean, I guess for your town it was kind of fitting. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that that was bad. Every, everyone knew, everyone knows that one. That's crazy. <laughs> He was very nice. He attended the shows. Yeah. He yeah. saw two shows. He truly enjoyed it. And uh, what well, we always write the warm fuzzies for the bus driver, especially back uh, for those stories. It was like the same bus driver all the time. So like it was like we actually would usually develop a connection with the person who was a new bus driver every day. So then we specifically wrote, write, write all these warm fuzzies for him. And then the trip he comes with a microphone. He's like, I'd like to thank you all for these fuzzy wuzzies. <laughs> <laughs> And um, yeah, I can't, I can't make quotes that'll last forever. Oh, it's so good. Fuzzy Wuzzy. Remember Fuzzy Wuzzy's game? Of course not. Alright. Yeah. So, 
tell me about what um, impact the adult advisors have made on your experience in playing. Um, I think um, all the advisors, like not just the peers, these are not even just the ones who go on tour, like the ones they have more home help too. I literally, we couldn't do the show without them because they do so much. If it's like Adriana choreographing the show, or if it's this is cutting me fixing Louise's costume, even just like doing different things that you wouldn't, like you don't necessarily point out. Like I know Mrs. Cuddy, she's really big on like giving little gifts, and it's so cute because it really shows like all the advisors really do care about us, even if we're not always around them. And also about like the choir alums who come back, like Jamie or Megan and Trevor and. It's just really cool having them back to share more experience with them. So thank you for coming back. Um, going off of what Lydia said, like I'm, I'm thankful for the PUC for helping put all these shows together, and I'm also thankful for the advisors because I feel like they're kind of like, like I can like go to them and ask a question, or they just cheer me up most of the time. Like if something's like on my mind, I want to like, like um, get something off my chest. I want to go to them, ask them a question. And, like just kind of say something to like get my spirits to be poked up a little more. Just in general, like they're there with you, and it's nice to have a lot of people around you that are like that are adults that you or, or like like young adults, like college graduates and stuff that you can go to and talk to about things. Just in general, make you feel better. Um, I think by the time you're um, leaving the choir, you've grown very close to. Um, all the advisors, which is wonderful, and specific advisors too. Like I know that um, me and Mrs. Branson have this weird thing where we send each other cards all the time because I just love Mrs. Branson. Um, and Mrs. Burroughs too is not even advisor anymore. Like I'll send her cards. Um, but there's just something very special about the advisors. I think they make an extra effort to get to know you and how you're doing. Um, and they do more than just the job that's assigned them for the tour, like costumes or lights. Um, they really do want to be a friend and a um, teacher to each and every choir member. Um, I see them as role models, like what Lydia said. I see them making those little gifts. Like that just shows that like an extra thought from a really long way, and that's something that like I've taken with me. I think that's very important. Um, I think uh, one of the, the impacts of the peers and the advisors I've had in my life is it's been cool to have like a adults that I've developed legitimate relationships with over the years. Like I feel like a lot of times in your life, I mean this group and with this group in general, the school, there's a lot of folks based on the friendships you develop with like people like who are of your age. But I think the cool thing about this program is it makes you develop some like pretty legitimate like friendships with like adults that you would never really have, which proves to be pretty enriching. Like uh, it's I mean I mean there's I mean there's many of them. like there's like Bam Bam and Dave, Ramsdids, Maravilia, it's like, you know, all of them. And it's just it's just been cool to like uh, get to like really like know and meet these people in a setting like this and develop like legitimate friendships with people who like otherwise you would have like never even been in contact with if it wasn't for a group that was so based on working together like this one. So I mean, not only is that a good skill for life, but I've always valued the specific of uh, friendships it's been able to foster. And with, uh, with, with the peer system with and with every single person involved in this group. Um, I just like how I think it's really cool that the advisors, like they're volunteers, so they love the group just as much as we do, and like it's, I just think it's cool that, like yeah, we do the group and we're sad when we leave, but like they're like always here and they always love it and they keep loving it. And I also think that it's really important to have advisors that you're close with. Close with. For me, especially, I just think that you take something from each of them and it makes you a more well-rounded person after you're done with the group, and I think that's really. Important. I guess the one thing that I'd say, and I don't want to be redundant, everyone's kind of said what I wanted to say, but if there's one, one like a little special thing I wanted to say was, um, I've been the, the Nathan's uh, devotion group for four years, and I've, um, uh, I've so uh, as a result of that, me and uh, Mrs. Nathan's, like his mom, has, uh, have become very, very, very close, and it's it's, it's really nice to, like, as um, I really like what Kyle said, that like you, you start to have a relationship with these adults that you like wouldn't, wouldn't have had otherwise if it wasn't for the choir, so I, I, I think that 
um, Mrs. Nathan's is always like making sure that I'm all right and like offering to um, have me over their house for dinner or something like that. She's like, and I, you know, big cookies. Like, it's just a, it's a it's a really amazing like outlet to have like an, an adult like an adult who has been through like a lot and can impart legitimate wisdom to, to you, which sometimes is what you need as opposed to like going to a friend that's your age, going to an adult that genuinely cares for you can be a very good uh, positive force in your life. And going on with that theme, impacts of friendships that you've made with Barner. I know Kyle touched a little bit on friends. So. Should I start? Okay. Um, well, when I first joined choir, I was I was already friends with um, Jake and Kyle from school, so I don't I didn't go in completely like some people join the choir and they go in completely and don't know anyone, which is that which is always crazy. But I already knew Jake and Kyle kind of were able to introduce me to some of the other people, and I was friends with Aaron too, and uh, so so they were able to. <laughs> They were able to introduce me to other people in the choir, which, I, um, which has been great. And uh, I think the, the one thing I love about choir is that um, you're able to communicate with like old, and form friendships with people that are older and with people that are significantly younger. Whereas in school, you might not be able to have the opportunity to do that and to form friendships with people from Verona, uh, West Essex, or like even like Seton Hall, like the Mount. So like it's been kind of um, it's kind of weird like the diversity of friends that you're able to get because the, the group itself is so diverse. Um, I think the friendships that I've made in this choir are ones that I would have for the rest of my life, which I think is really cool because you go through school with people for like years and years and years and you just kind of leave them and that's it. Like you don't really, you're not still friends with them after you leave for college. But I think that like these people are like pretty much your family after being at the rehearsals for so long and hanging out so many times. And I mean, I like hanging out with these people more than I like hanging out with my school friends, but. That's a side story. And I, have, I actually have a story. Um, me and Erin Bogert were good friends when we were younger, and then she moved to Switzerland, and we kind of lost touch a little bit, obviously, because that's like halfway across the world. But <laughs> um, when she came back and joined choir, um, our moms, who are good friends, got together, and they were like, wow, like it's, it's really cool, because if Erin had joined choir, Louise and her probably wouldn't be as close as they used to be. And I just think that's weird because we were such good friends that if it weren't for choir, we wouldn't have remade that connection. Yeah. Um, my, for, for like my friendships with people in this group, I mean, some of them because I've been in this since I was so young. A lot of a lot of these friendships have been like literally caused the group. Like my friendship with Jake, obviously, has been fostered by this group even more than it has been by school. And I mean, I've known a, like a lot of these people forever. And I mean, I've also been happy to like bring uh, some people into the group, which I uh, have become a great part of it, like Nikki, like Aaron. Um, I think bring, I was able to bring some people outside my life and make them a part of like this community, and I think it's only strengthened my friendships with them. Like people, my my friendships with people have only gotten like stronger like through the years because of the choir. Uh, I also became a little close with this one dude choir. Uh, we'll see how that. Will We'll see how I like that one in 20 years, and uh, yeah, and uh, yeah. I just think I think it, it's just been like an, it's just been like an interesting experience, and like it's it's made me have the closest friends I've had in my entire life, and like the relationships and friendships you make here are like definitely more, like more meaningful, more important than anywhere else. And I think a lot of that is based on what we do here. Not only is, not only is it like a great like faith based community, but just the very concept of like of like perform, performing music and putting on a musical. I mean, all of my closest friends have been garnered through doing that very activity. So I think it speaks to something very significant about what it takes to create things like this group is able to create and the types of incredible friendships that doing that can foster. And I, I don't think there's anything else that can recreate those types of bonds.
and it was so much fun. Um, but also, like we said, I think I would, I think I spend a lot more time with kids in this group than my school friends. And I made so many different friendships that, like, I don't think I would have ever had the chance to make if I wasn't in choir. And I'm so thankful that I've been able to make so many friendships and more people coming. Like, I know, I didn't really know Kelly when she joined. But, and we've been going to the same school since like 7th grade yeah. and so being able to have a better relationship with people that I already knew and then create a lot more friendships with either the kids who are older than me or the kids who are younger than me, I just treasure all the friendships that I made with everybody. Um, at the risk of sounding cliche, I had this thought a while ago that I met a lot of people throughout life, just like the random like little theater things and everything, but like the people here I feel like will genuinely be there for you, like for the rest of I, I think for the rest of my life, honestly. Like if I was like just like text like anyone or so if I'm like quiet or something like they would, they would be there for me and vice versa, like I would be there for them too. And I don't know, I just feel like like throughout high school, like in like just life in general, like you get like you kind of like leave friends, you gain friends. Like around like the beginning of high school, like there were some friends I was kind of like, okay, I don't, you're not that nice to me anymore, so I'm just gonna move on from you. And I feel like coming here was especially like I learned more about like loyalty and like how important it is to be friends with someone and and like how connections work that way and how like most of these kind of Things that happen with these with different people, the kind of experiences you have, you always remember to be able to get in touch with whoever you want to get in touch with and become friends and keep friendships. Well, that goes into the, one of the final parts here just reflections of choir as part of your, part of your life. How has it just impacted you in general, as a person, as part of your life? I picked up a religion minor. Really? Yeah, no, I'm minoring in religion at St. Joseph's, which is cool. And um, next year, as part of the service learning program, I was asked by the director of the program because he needed students to, be, to run this program and he didn't have any, so he went through freshman resumes. They found me and four other kids, and next year we'll be running a uh, choir program at a middle and elementary school in a like high risk area. It's going to be like 40 kids. I have no idea how that's going to work, but I'm very, very excited for it. And I think I'll be somewhat prepared, having been involved here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think choir has led me to has impacted me in that I picked up the religion minor. I'm going to, although I'm not pursuing music, I'll be doing something musical next year with kids, hopefully um, helping them in some way, shape, or form, because I don't have this program yet. Um, and I don't know, I'm bad right now. <laughs> Sorry. I think that all the different experiences that I've had through prior and all the places that I've been able to go through, whether it's choir tour or taking a trip to Sweden, making those types of friendships, I think it's just, it's so wonderful how I've been able, like we as a group have been able to go to so many different places that I don't think I would have had the chance to go to if it weren't for choir. So I love that impact and yeah, just having fun on those trips. <laughs> Uh, I will go. I can go. Um, I think for reflection on choir is part of your life. Um, I don't think you can't do anything as important to someone's life and significant as this without gaining like many new things that I've been able to apply to myself as a, as a human being. Like not only has I think the group made me better at like 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 singing and acting through like the experiences it has given me and like the ways I've been like challenged through like the inventive ways we stage the productions, but I think it's it's definitely just made me a genuinely better person. It's made me value like. The, like the friendships I've made, it's made me value um, like looking looking for like like the, like the positivity in life. It's made me value like 
just wanting to be like a genuinely like good person and like looking for that like like that like inner morality like I just feel like these are like there's like many like positive like great things that like choir like instills by itself being a program and then you just pick those things up yourself and um, beyond that I think it's just been really it's just instilled within me a desire to like even if not I, I know I'll always have a place in this community but wherever I end up in life it's just taught me that being a part of a community of people who are always there for you and always have your back and who can you and who you can genuinely call your friends and who like genuinely are just are just on every level like support you emotionally and are just and are actually always there for you and you know you can count on that's so important and I mean this will this will always be a group of my life but I know I will go throughout my life searching for other other thing, like groups and places that can still like the, the same values that the squire does because I mean it's been the reason that any success I've achieved today and any and anything positive that I think has come in my life has a huge foundation in the fact that I've had this community as a foundation to that and I know it will always be important to me for that reason. Um, going off what Kyle said, I think that choir is, itself is just like an outlet for if you're having a hard time at home or, or in school and it's just um, like a place you can go where nobody judges you, you're friends with everyone, like they can just make you laugh, you don't have to think about anything bad that's going on and I just think that's really important to have in your life because if you have nowhere else to go, you need like that structure and that community of people that love you and will support you. And also, um, if it weren't for choir, I wouldn't, probably would have never discovered like my passion of theater, per se. I, I mean, I'm not involved in any of the school plays or musicals, and I just think that it's really something that I would be lost without if I hadn't joined choir. Okay. Um, yeah, now going off of what you said, I thought I think it's like just very important to have an environment where you can be open and free and be able to express yourself to like the to like who you actually are, and not have to put on a facade to impress anybody else or to meet like a certain standard or to meet like a like a certain like stereotype that you think you meet. Like a, I feel like school environments are extremely like you're conforming to a certain degree of social acceptability, which the, and then why you can just be yourself. Nobody nobody judges you. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you come from, where you are. It's a completely judged tree zone and I think and I, I think what my, what I really like what we said where like everybody needs that type of environment and everybody needs that type of structure in their life it's just a part of being a healthy human being and being a happy human being and uh, I before joining the choir I really didn't have an environment that was similar to this so I think it's I think it's been crucial to my development as a human being and becoming more confident and uh, losing some insecurities that I want to have. Okay, so I think that choir has definitely given me more of a feeling of like confidence and assurance of myself. Like the fact that I, I can like do certain things, I can make certain friendships with people that like I don't. It's kind of similar to the other question about the friendships because like people like that aren't in my school or something like that. Like there are people definitely do live in my school, but there are people outside of the school as well. And like I feel like I can go into more like social situations and not be as like. I wouldn't say nervous per se, but just like I feel more like, hey, what like what the heck? I, I, I've, I've done I've done why I've been in different places in the world, so I can I can handle this. Like I can handle the little things that sometimes made me uneasy, and even like moving ahead in my life, I have that that foundation as a good set for me. So, any words of wisdom to the underclassmen? People who are will be in your shoes very soon, <laughs> or not, or younger. If I was to say one thing to the underclassmen, is that time goes by really fast. Like you can, <laughs> um, like no matter how many years you've been prior, you're like, oh, I still have a couple more years. Like, and probably every hug circle, like high school year wise, I get to Kyle and Jake. It's like, oh yeah, we just did another year. Like, can't wait till next year. And then all of a sudden it's just like, wow, this is our last one. So just cherish all the time you have with people and just have fun. If you're not having fun, then it's not going to be fun to keep doing it with everybody. So just have fun and good luck in the future. <laughs> um, 
my advice would be to get to know everybody around you, and especially those in your grade. I've been telling everybody that because we, I think, um, our senior class, um, more than the last few that I've seen, we all are really, really close friends with each other and love each other. And I think that's a very important um, foundation to graduate with. Um, so for the underclassmen, I would tell them to befriend each other and bridge the age gaps and just have so much fun with each other so when you leave, you know everybody and you've had a full choir experience, but also um, those in your grade have really, really tight and important friendships with them because then when it's your senior year, you're going to have so much fun and we, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> so. uh, yeah, I'm, I guess, I ended like the senior rec thing. Um, in Vancouver with this piece of advice, and I'll do it again for this one. I would just say that uh, the if, if there's one thing that I would that I would implore everyone to do, it's to it's to embrace looking at things positively. I mean, in this choir, uh, I've had I mean, for me and for everyone, there's obviously times when like you're in a, you're in a group like this and you and you're met with experiences that like I mean they, they challenge they challenge you. You might, you might think it's unfair. You might think it's you, it might make you upset, but. Uh, I, I think I think like like the concept of the concept of cynicism, especially in a group like this. I mean, it, it might it might feel justified, but it's it's a bad quality. And if like you're and if you're kind to the people around you and you and you're positive, like I think amazing things could happen. And I think that group is, this group is a testament to that. I think uh, there. I mean, th there are always going to be times when perhaps you you feel like negative emotions, but I would I would implore people to like push those out because there's never going to be a moment where you're sitting where I am today and not say that this wasn't the best experience of your, of your life because I think everyone can say that, that this is the best part of their entire life. And knowing that no matter what happens, you're always going to be able to like confidently look, confidently look back at this and say it was the best thing that ever happened to you. Don't even waste a minute of it being negative. I always always look. Just always look for the best in it because it truly is an incredible thing. More, like better than any other aspect of your life, I would say. Um, well, everyone already kind of said what I was gonna say, so I'll just go off what Kyle said. Um, like, don't sweat the small stuff. Um, not that it will ruin your whole experience, but you don't want to look back on something and be like, wow, like. I'm really mad at myself for ruining that by being upset about this or doing that. Like, just be positive and have as much fun as you possibly can. If something doesn't go your way, it's fine. Just look at the bright side of everything and you will have a great time. Yeah, no, definitely um, agree with everyone, uh, everyone said before me. Just cherish your time here because it goes by a lot quicker than you think it's going to. I remember watching the senior videos when I was a freshman and being like, oh my god, it's going to be so far away. Like, <laughs> I, like it, it, it was so distant then and I can still remember like how I felt in that moment. And now I'm like here and like I've already, like my home, my last home shows are already over and I still haven't really wrapped my head around that. So just kind of. Definitely um, stay positive and uh, really cherish every moment you have with each other because it goes by a lot quicker than you think it's going to. And it's such a special environment that you'll that, that you it's it's very rare to see a group like this in your lifetime. So just really enjoy every moment that you have with one another. I'd say just try to be. Um, be yourself, be comfortable and with yourself so that you can have the willingness to be kind to others and also to be social with everyone and like not just, and have like, 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 like broaden out, like, like don't have the age gaps, don't have the, like, like even if they don't know them that well, like make a point to make more friends, you can have more people that you can be friends with and so then You'll, you'll be happier off, happier and better off. Just be more positive. I know everyone said positive, and that's important to me too. And just like, just keep being happy. Just like, make an effort to be kind to others and be happy with yourself. I, I think just like, speaking on behalf of the seniors, um, really just like being very proud of how been able to see everyone grow throughout the year and that uh, it's just it's amazing how much like how much people have grown and you really like see their strengths coming out so as a group I think we're very proud of all the underclassmen and can't wait to see what you do next. <laughs>
Goodbye.